we are here still trying to connect to our database. So far, what we've done is this. So we've created our database class, which has uh, two functions here. Now it's important to put comments here. We're going to add comments. So let me put a comment here on this one. Uh, I'll say connect to DB so that uh, the next time you're coming back to read your own code, you're going to know um, what's going on. Construct like that. So you can put as many comments as you want. So we have our database class and we have the auto load and we have the sign up page here. Where is this? Okay, good. Okay, so we don't need this. So we have the sign up page here, which uses JavaScript and we have the API. So API is our main page for PHP, right? So this is why it requires these files like auto load, auto load loads, all the files that are PHP required. Okay, so we can close the auto load for now and we can remain with the database class and the API here. Now, the thing is what we are doing is this data file get contents will always be there just like this object. So let's make it more uh, pronounced. And also the DB will always be there because we'll always need the DB here. So what we wanna do is let's get, uh, just like we've added capital letters here, we're going to use the same thing. We're going to say data. So let me put an underscore and say raw like this data raw is equal to that. That's the raw data and then data object underscore obj. Okay, so that we can actually know what's going on. So this is the raw data, which is in form of a string. And then this is the data object that we get from there and we come down here. Okay, so now we need to know if when something is set uh, when one of these is set and it's set in a certain way then we'll do other things down here okay so here we're going to say process the data like so and we are ready to go so let's come back here to database.php now we need to create a public function right now, the reason we are naming this one public is because we want to be able to access it on a different page here. Okay, so let's go down here and say public function. Now, this function is going to be called write. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what it's doing. So write because we want to actually, actually write to our DB. So in this case, uh, we are signing up. This is what we're doing. This is a sign up. So we need to write to our DB. And this is the database right here. So users and all these are the columns. Hmm. All right. So before we continue, we go and do it like this. Let's come here. Now to write to the database is very easy using PDO. The formula is like this. So what you do, first of all, we need to create our connection. So we're going to copy this, this. Let me copy that. Come down here. So instead of this con, we're just going to say connection like so. Connection. The other connection we're doing here was just for testing purposes. So we'll make our new connection here. Con is equal to this connect, which means this function right here inside. So once the connection has been made, uh, then we can uh, do some in interesting things. Now, instead of normal uh, connection, the way we do, uh, what's this? Uh, the way we do due to security issues i want to use uh, prepared statements because in the previous videos people have complained that i'm not using prepared statements and so on even though i don't really use prepared statements in real life but i'm going to use prepared statements in here because uh, it's no big deal all right so to make a, a query using a prepared statement goes like this first of all you create a statement so we're going to call it statement just for clarity's sake 
and then we're going to use our connection which is con in this case and we're going to say prepare like so so this is how it's always done and then we're going to add our query in there like so so since we, we, we require a query from the user there we're going to put query here as well so that you pass the query in here and then we put it there now let's say we want to read from the database usually what we do is this a query will go something like this uh, select or from users where id is equal to <clears throat> and then you may have a variable in here called id something like this and that will probably be your query now the problem is that if a user doesn't put an id instead they put some malicious code in here uh, you're going to end up with problems and you're going to get hacked with your database so what prepared statements do is that they separate the variables from the actual query so that even though the variables themselves contain malicious content it will not affect it will not change the query itself because for example take uh, for example if i get this query and instead of a user supplying a proper id or let's say it's a name the, you ask them pre, please provide your name like uh, we have here in where you're telling them to provide a username now instead of that they will put something like uh, uh, they'll put some uh, mysql code in there they'll do something like that and put some inverted commas and put a specially crafted uh, piece of information to a point where when it comes here it messes up the whole uh, query and changes it into something else like for example they can do this because this one means uh, comment the rest of the you may have a query where you want to check if the username and password are correct the only thing they will do is get the username and then put just these two lines which mean the rest of the query becomes a comment and then you have problems okay so you can easily be hacked that way so in order to prevent that we use prepared statement now it, this in form of prepared statement is converted to this like this okay so what's happening here is that we replace the variable itself with just some text but we put this full colon there and then what we do next once we run this query in here we do what we call uh, a bind a bind param so in that case we are going to say uh, statement which is right there is equal to or instead we've already declared it so we're going to say statement and we'll say bind param like this and then we're going to say uh, in inverted commas like that id oh sorry id and then we'll say comma id like this so what if what this is doing if you had uh, let's say you said uh, select select all from users where id is equal to id and maybe you have put an and and you say name is equal to and you do that name something like this so you would bind both of these like this and you go and say name so that it knows what it will do now is get this query and replace all these with a full colon there that these that have a full colon and replace them with the values in these variables like that in that way it knows that this query and the variables are separate entities so once you finish binding these then you can do a statement execute like this uh, where is this statement execute like so so this is how a prepared statement goes so first of all you prepare the query after preparing the query you bind the parameters in the query to some actual values and then you execute the query it's that simple now the problem comes in because you see if we are having a function like this we don't know how many parameters will be in a particular query and so we won't know how many statements bind statements to put here because all these binds depend on how many variables you have and then we can't even put these variables like so because we won't know what variables will be in the query at that time because queries come in different forms and shapes so we we must create a function that is universal that can by itself 
determine what's in the query and actually bind those to actual uh, items. So luckily, there's a way we can do that by simply supplying an array of information that corresponds to the information in the query. So we'll put that here and just say, we'll call it uh, data just for simplicity's sake. Or we'll say data array because we will have to know that it's actually an array, something like that. Okay, so let's create the proper code here. So here we open the connection, okay? And then we prepare our query, all is well and good. But here now we need a loop. Now, data query is equal to, let's put an equal sign here and do that, something like this. So we are equating it to an empty array. Now, by putting an equal sign here, what we are saying is that this variable is optional now, because even if we don't provide it, it's simply going to default to an empty array. So sometimes you may just need to put a query because for example, a query like uh, select all, select all from users. This one has no, uh, no parameters to work with. It's just select all from users. So we won't need this array in this case. We won't need to bind anything, right? So in such a case, we'll leave this one empty and it will equate to an empty array, okay? So what we would do instead, we would add a for each loop here, which will go to the data array, like so, all right? So here's our for each loop. So in case the data array is empty, this part will not run because it will have no information, so which is well and good for us. And then let's move one of these bind statements in there, like so. Okay, now we need a way to be able to go through each data and get the key and add it here and the value. So we have a key and a value. So the key will be here, the value will be here. So let's just copy this value and put it there. And then we want to get the key because we also don't know what the key will be and simply put it there. We'll concatenate like so. But because we don't need this anymore, we just need it to have that full colon. So it's the full colon connected to whatever the key is. So which would translate to something. Let's say if the key is ID, it will become something like this, which is well and good. Okay, so we don't need any more bind params like so. And then we can simply execute the statement okay now we're going to um, check is equal to something like that we'll check to see if something everything worked well so that we have a result here and then we'll come down here and check if check right if everything went well if check is positive and we are going to return true right otherwise if it's negative it's going to go all the way down here so we'll return a force false down here like that okay so let's put a comment here and say write to database like so so there we go that's our function right there so we are using both pdo and prepared statements okay so in this case, there's no need to sanitize the data that we're getting from the user because we are using prepared statements. Awesome. All right, so let's give it a run and see if it actually works. So let's construct a query and see this thing.